Welcome back to Hustle Nation podcast. Today, we've got a real treat. Our friend Jamar Jones is in the house. Welcome, Jamar. Let me give you a brief little intro here. Uh, Jamar is a business owner, speaker, author of the book, Change Your Circle, Change Your Life. He's a visionary who believes in leadership and subscribes to the notion that we can all connect with each other in a relatable way. Jamar's experience inspired him to establish his own branding and media agency, Forever Media, which we'll talk about. Yep. He is the first African-American business owner to rent out a sports arena for the Lead the Movement Business Conference, also something we need to talk about. He's worked with companies like BMW, Red Bull, Vaynerx, and created a brand and audience of over 40,000. Jamar is proud to serve others as a beacon for excellence his philosophies and intentional action have changed the landscape of his life and lives of others. Jamar, you've got a lot of cool shit going on. Lead the movement, business conference, forever media, young guns movement. What's up? Hey, man. Well, thank you for uh, having me on here. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of, there's a lot happening. I, I was just at an event yesterday um, for uh, so, uh, really prevention of gun violence um so supporting a lot of nonprofits. it was downtown um and somebody keep at you know everybody keeps coming up to me and they're like hey so what you got going on and it's like it's such a mouthful at this point where i just smile <laughs> and i just a lot man you know like i, I don't even explain it anymore it's it's uh how much time do lot. you have there's a, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot going on behind the scenes and um yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just, an, I'm just blessed, man. The the hard work and determination and perseverance really just got me to this point. And now, um, you know, doing cool things like this, man, on the Hustle Mindset podcast, man. So it's dope. It's awesome. Right on. So we'll, we'll get to all these cool ventures, but I want to know about your story. You're a pretty interesting guy. You got your hands involved in a lot of things, business, but also nonprofit, which I love, making an impact in the community of Milwaukee. Yeah. Tell us your story. Where did all this start? Yeah. So the fast version is, um, and the beginning, so I did hip hop for about 11 years of my life. So I was a motivational hip hop artist. Um, I worked my way up from man, from the gutter of that, um, literally building myself up, um, working on the promotions, working on the shows to at my peak, I was doing about a hundred shows uh, a year. And I was traveling around. I did two tours. I did uh, one in the Midwest and then one on the East Coast. Uh, opened up for T.I., Snoop Dogg, Keisha Cole, Common, um, Bone Dang. Thugs and Harmony, um, awesome. Yellow Wolf. The uh, list goes on and on. Um, and, you know, it was a big part of my life. You know, that's kind of where the entertainment side comes from. And that's kind of why I do it so um, effortlessly where – it's it's just a part of me. It's it's ingrained in me, but that came to a screeching halt when actually I tore my vocal cords uh, performing at the University of Minnesota. Um, I just strained it, doing way too much. It was three shows in one weekend, um, and it it was it was bad. I mean, I'm I'm kind of you know making it look like it was not that big of a deal, but it was it was bad. I was spitting up blood and everything on the side um, oh oh. of the stage. I had my guy there with me, so he was kind of helping me power through. He didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't really, like, scream. It's just all of a sudden, like, there was just pain here and, like, and stress. And then it was um, – I couldn't really, like, talk <laughs> anymore. So I kind of did my Mariah Carey and just, like, lip sync the rest of the uh, – <laughs> the rest of the, the show. Um, and my guy was there, so he, you know, he was hyping up and I kept tapping him like, yo, like, <laughs> you just, just take I'm me done. home, man. Like, let's, let's do this. Um, and so that came to a screeching halt. So that's when, um, so I also was working, um, in IT as well. So I worked my way up from support to an IT manager, um, for a financial company. And that's where I like, we learned a lot about the ins and outs of, um, a, um, kind of the beginning of leadership, but also, uh, the corporate sector, um, and then also just from, I'm an IT guy. Um, I'm really a nerd at heart. You can see all the comic stuff behind me. Um, love it. Like I love, I love this stuff. But then that's uh, when I got laid off. Um, so there's about 45 people lost their job. So first I, I ripped my vocal cords and then about two years of just being depressed after that. Cause I, I had to like finish out shows and do stuff, but 
I couldn't really do music anymore the way of like to the level that I was doing it. I'm like, dude, my dreams got to change like that. And it was, it was hard, depressed. Um, so this was permanent damage. Years. Yeah. It's, um, it's still there. I've now learned ways to like, I do speaking and stuff. Like I've learned ways to, to do what I do um, with no damage, but like, there's not really a solution for it. Um, it's just sometimes like, especially with like rapping, like, <laughs> You got to go all in, especially on recording too. So I was like, maybe I could just record. And then like, if you're doing like a few songs in in, in a night or a long recording session, man, I won't be able to speak for like two days. Um, it's it's pretty brutal. So got laid off from the corporate job and then just had to decide on what I wanted to do next. And so I started my company then about seven and a half years ago. And I just threw out anything I was kind of good at was I had like 20 different services. Um, and then I just wanted to try my own thing. Um, I've been doing my own thing for so long with the music side, but never in the business side, but they're pretty much the same. Um, you learn a lot when you're doing something for yourself like that with music. Um, and so I just I'll apply that to business. And so now just been growing that a lot of ups and downs through forever media, but, um, you know, we're finally getting in that point where, um, people starting to know who we are and, and we're, we're really getting known for, for a few things. Um, and so we're just constantly just, you know, growing and just trying to get bigger and bigger at this point. I want to take a step back. You said motivational rapper. Is that right? Yeah. So at the rap game and anything in music, but specifically the category of rap is very competitive. You see a lot of people just like yeah. in business come and go was that your way of differentiating? I mean, obviously, I know you're a motivational guy just in general. But why did you choose that path? <laughs> um, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know why I chose the motivational path. I think through just growth, like just personal growth. Um, in the beginning, like, you know, when you start rapping, you always just start rapping like somebody else. You know, that's just what you do. Yeah. You know, you mimic somebody else. Um, and so I was just mimicking other artists and then eventually I found my own lane and, um, that's when I just, I start, I stopped really, um, cursing a lot. Um, and then just dove into that motivational side because I had started to learn and discover things about myself and I wanted to spread that with others. Um, and just to give that kind of that hope and that freedom and that motivation to do things, um, and so that's what I, and then that's honestly when that's, that's when the uptick happened within my music career, because that's when all the shows start happening and more, more building up the fan base. Um, and I did those two tours I did, I actually did them alongside um, of Relay for Life. So that's uh, um, an organization from the um, American Cancer Society. Um, but it's, it's every single college uh, has a Relay for Life. And so I actually... Um, found a creative and unique way of how to get into the colleges and attach myself to those events. And then once I booked the show at the, at the college, I would then book something um, while I was in town, another show. And that's how I was able to do so many shows. That's amazing. I feel like you've brought this motivational aspect into business as well. So you found it worked for you there and almost serendipitously, subconsciously, you brought it into business. Is that fair? Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, it's just what it's just what I know now. <laughs> it's just what I breathe every day. <laughs> so, Jamar, you know, one of the things that I heard and kind of throughout that story is the kind of never give up mentality. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, to your point, you said you had to you had to change your dreams at one point, which, you know, for so many people is a that's a really difficult thing to overcome, especially when in a lot of ways you were on your path. Yeah. Right. You know, this wasn't, well, I'm, I'm not making progress. I'm not advancing. And so, you know, just from a, like a, a mental standpoint, you know, you know, even as you sit today, right, you're talking about all the things you're doing with, you know, lead the movement and forever. And there's so many challenges I'm sure you still face each and every day. Mm -hmm. how, how do you keep that mindset of that never give up and that trusting the, the process that you're going through each and every day? Uh, when you're doing something, for something that's bigger than yourself. That's the only thing that's going to get you through. Um, so I always tell people, you got to have a really strong why. If your why is kind of flimsy, 
you'll quit instantly. So like, if you think about working out and it's like, ah, I just want to get buff. That's a horrible why. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's not, <laughs> it, it's, it's not, you're, you're going to do it for a little bit and then you're not going to want to do it. And then you're going to be like, ah, you know, it's, it's whatever, but you're not going to push through. So you got to find that strong why. And for me, it's about building legacy. It's about building something and changing lives. Um, and if I stop, I'm going to completely abandon that, um, that goal, you know, of mine. And so I'm not really pushing through for myself. I'm pushing through for everybody else for the, the time that somebody comes up to me and they're like, dude, like you changed my life in X, Y, and Z type of capacity, or I didn't realize this until I heard this from you, or I got connected with somebody that you connected me with. And that changed the you know path of my life. And when you hear those stories, it's like, that's why I push through every single agonizing point where I want to stop. Um, and the, the goal of it is, is that if you just don't stop, like things will happen for you no matter what. Sure. It may not be in your timing, but it will happen for you. So how do you remind yourself of your why? Oh, man. I mean, the, the, my reminders are just by... I guess doing what I'm doing, um, you know, like when, when you hear those stories um, and when I have to remind myself, I kind of look back. I mean, it's great for video. It's great for, you know, social media. It's great for um, just tapping people on the shoulder. I got a really strong circle as well um, of, of people I can go to. So if I'm feeling a type of way, I can go to them and be like, Am I doing, you know, like, am I on the right track, man? <laughs> like, what, yeah. what's going on? And I can talk to some people and then, you know, they'll remind me too. Like, nah, man, like, you got to look and reflect. Like, you're doing a lot of stuff and, like, you just got to stay on this track. And they, they give me perspective of it. Jamar, you, you mentioned something really important about your circle, circle of influence. You wrote a book about uh, change your circle, change your life. I think I got that right. Mm -hmm. I, I've not read the book yet. Uh, but I have a pretty good idea based on the title, what it's about. And I already know I agree with the whole concept. Let's talk about that. I, th I just find that really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, the change your circle, change your life is all about uh, evaluating your current circle. And then how do you get into new ones? And uh, it is literally, I put the how-to guide to change anyone's life. If you follow the action steps within that book, it is impossible for you not to change your life is impossible. Now, if you shortcut every th single thing, <laughs> then, you know, I can't be, you know, liable for that. But if you do every single action, because with action comes results, good Amen. or bad, good or bad. So the, the circle is all about who do I have around me right now? Um, and I like to give everybody a quick exercise that they can do um, where it's like, hey, I, man, maybe I haven't listened, I haven't read the book yet. Quick exercises that write down every single person that's directly influencing your life. So if it's friends, family, coworkers, acquaintances, um, spouse, um, anybody that's in that direct kind of contact, you you hit the you usually contact with these people like every week, every two weeks, at least every month. Those are kind of your direct circle, and then write down their name and then put down a plus or a minus by their name. Are they adding to your life or are they subtracting from your life? Just do that exercise and be able to go down the list and then tally up how many negatives you have and how many pluses you have. It's going to be a really good gut check. And don't do it like somebody else is going to see it. Because I told somebody this and they're like, well, what if? Oh, but I'm like, you're doing that in the mindset of that person. You're not doing it for you. This is only for you to see. You can crumple it up, throw in the trash, burn it, if all I care, um, afterwards. But just look at that and evaluate, do a quick gut check of, that will really tell you of where you're at in your life. And if you got 50% negative, you got to change some stuff. You got to start putting up barriers. You got to start making some adjustments, maybe making some cuts. <laughs> yeah, don't you think um, it, most people are 50% negative, if not more? 100%, especially depending on your environment, um, your, your upbringing. Um, there's a lot of factors with that. But I do believe that a lot of people don't have that positivity in their life. And that's kind of the quick 
checkpoint for somebody and to say like, I got to, I got to change this. And they're wondering why there are, where they're at in their life. That's the first kind of checkpoint. And then, then you have to figure out how do I get into new circles? How do I get into these, into these new chapters in my life? Um, and you just have to be intentional about it. You just have to, don't overthink it. You have to be able to go into these new circles and find a way. And honestly, with the internet, it's, it's pretty easy <laughs> to get into new circles. Um, and you just have to discover a lot about yourself. And then you're able to apply that um, to getting out to these new circles. So I definitely believe everybody um, can learn from that. And everybody at any point, personal or business uh, or professionally, like you have to change your circle. It's, it's, it's impossible to stay stagnant um, the entire time. And what What's point, interesting? Though, did, you, did you figure this out, that you have to change your circle to change your life? So it actually happened, um, it's now six years ago. So I got this old video um, of me, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm doing some kind of live stream with somebody. And I just went on the on the couch, I was like, man, you got to change your circle, change your life, man. And there was a moment where I just kind of realized, I'm like, how did I get here? How did I get here? And I was like, well, it's the ability to change my circle from music, from IT, from the kind of other entrepreneurial things that I was doing at the time, and then now running my own business, I constantly was able to change my circle and be able to thrive in it. And that was the big awakening for me. I'm like, dude, everybody's got to do this. Everybody needs to do this. They have to do it. If you want to excel, if you want to grow in your career or even in your personal life, like this is, this is the change that you need. What's so powerful about that is as you change your circle, right? You get to learn from other people. You have get totally different perspective, right? And and to me, I think, you know, that's one of the things that people get stuck when they have a certain circle. If it's, you know, that negative circle you talk about, or even it's just not a circle that's pushing you to, you know, to get better and to be the best version of yourself, right? You know, the, yeah. a lot of us, we only see this part of the world that we see, right? We, we lack perspective and when you can open that up and you can ch change your circle, you know, and that, that idea of being intentional about it, you know, the reality is you get intentional trying to expand your circle or change your circle. There's going to be some people you're going to meet. that you are going to say, well, they're not going to be in my circle. Yeah. Right. You, know, you don't bat, a, you don't bat a thousand on that. No. But yeah. at the same point you get it, you get to meet people and talk to people that now all of a sudden you never, you never would have thought would be in your circle. You never would have been able to learn from and connect with that all of a sudden now are advancing your mindset, you're thinking you achieving your goals and, and, and making an impact on others as well. Yeah. hundred, hundred percent. And it's, uh, that's why I always say that if you want to change your circle first, you have to start by changing yourself. Um, and you have to unlock your self-awareness. That is literally your self-awareness is literally the key to everything. So Couldn't it's almost more. think about like the matrix, you know, it's like, it's that final door. It's like, I finally got through, <laughs> let me talk to the to the programmer or whoever he was talking to at the time uh in the movie but it's it's the it's that door that you need to break through um to know yourself and there's three ingredients you touched on one of them um to unlock your self-awareness and uh one of them is perspective you have to widen your perspective and look at things from a top-down view um the other one is fear so you have to know how to recognize fear and know how to break through it um and you'll never get rid of fear it's it's this fearless thing that people talk. I want to be fearless. No one's ever fearless. Um, I've been on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stages, and I still have a little bit of fear right before I go onto that stage. I mean, there's just that thing in your stomach. You're just like, oh man, and you just get up there and you do it. You do it. Yeah. Um, but you know how you have to know how to recognize it, and not be paralyzed, and and or even worse, run away. You know when you see some fear. Um, you have to know how to break through it. Um, and then the last one is confidence. So you have to build confidence. And then how do you build confidence? It's by giving yourself a shot. It's by trying. It's by making an attempt, doing some kind of action. Um, I like to call it winging it. You know, a lot of people think that everybody has all the answers. It's like most of the people right next to right next to you at your job, they're winging it as well. Even your bosses, even your managers, even the C-suite executives, you'd be surprised. You're like, oh, they should know this. <laughs> ah, so funny. So funny. Um, they're also winging it as well to a certain degree. I'm not saying 100%. So don't just say I'm like, they're, they're not just jumping off, but they're winging it. They're saying, hey, I'm going to figure this out. 
I'm going to put my best foot forward and have some confidence and figure it out. And I think though, if you master those three ingredients, um, that unlocks your self-awareness. And the last one I like to throw in there is uh, self-love. So if you mm. can yeah. love yourself first, where those opinions and all that other stuff, like you kind of build up a little bit of that armor to say, I love myself first. And just because you're not riding with my idea doesn't make me a horrible human being or doesn't make me where I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so you got to build that up for yourself and love yourself first. But once you do that, I mean, literally sky's the limit of, of things that you can do and places you can go. I'm going to have to add this to my queue. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Jamar, let's switch gears. I want to know about lead the movement. And obviously I've been following you on, on LinkedIn and social media for a while where did this come from? Um, and obviously it's, it's probably a lot like change your circle, change your life. Um, what was the motivation behind creating an awesome, massive event like this? Yeah. Lead the, lead the movement business conference. Um, it really came to me for two reasons. One was that I kind of through just seeing all these things in business, I'm just like, dude, business is boring. And yeah. like, it's boring. It's brutal. And everybody just puts on these masks all day long. And I'm just like, dude, this is not real life. Like we're not really connecting at this stuff. And so I wanted to add my flavor of entertainment within the business side of it, but through the lens of DEI. So like having like broadened that perspective and looking at things a little different and bringing different cultures and different people into people's circles to have open and honest conversations. And so that's where Lead the Movement was really born. Um, and the second one was, uh, you know, in this agency world, I was kind of tired of being at the client's mercy. <laughs> that, is, mm, that, is the other, that. that is the other thing, you know, even if you're doing a great job, man, it could take one change in uh, somebody in leadership. And the next thing you know, well, we're making cuts. So, you know, uh, you guys did a great job, but we're moving on to somebody else. Um, and so I wanted to start to creating um, different properties that we had control of. Um, and not to say that, you know, Lead the Movement Business Conference was not a cash cow. So like, I just want to make sure that's clear. <laughs> that was, it was not a cash cow. I lost money. Initially, it was the first inaugural uh, conference on that. But it was about getting out that idea and doing it once. And then once you start to get through that and then do it over and over again, that's where you start to make tweaks. And that's where it can start to, um, you know, the goal is to, for it to uh, bring some revenue in. So I also wanted to create another sector of, hey, we can control this. Um, and the conference was absolutely magical. Um, so I rented out the Pfizer Forum. Um, we had amazing speakers and panelists um, that were part of it on very key topics. We had entertainment uh, woven throughout it. I had a DJ there. We had an experience area where we had the um, a metaverse area. Uh, we had uh, esports area, nonprofit area where people can learn about nonprofits. Um, they could play video games on the side. They had a podcast area for people to learn about podcasting and get on a podcast. Uh, and there was a concert at night. It was just it was like a magical, like crazy event, crazy idea. Um, and in the testimonials alone, like we have um, within our, our platform, the Forever Movement, um, people can listen to um, uh, our, the podcast that happened there where we brought on all these people. I mean, you listen to that, it'll give you chills of, of kind of the life-changing moments that happen for people. Um, and it was absolutely incredible. We're going to do it again um, in 2023. And uh, we're partnering up with Summerfest. And it's going to be absolutely, absolutely incredible. That's cool. So is a, a big portion of this event about DE and I? I would say that all the programming, all the format is always um, thought through from the, from the perspective of DE, DEI. Um, so that is a big portion of it. Yes. Um, but it's more about how to innovate. So the innovation of, branding and marketing, the innovation of recruitment and retention, the innovation of tech, you know, uh, innovation of how we're connecting with communities. Um, that's really what it's about, but it's thinking through the lens of how are we being more diverse and inclusive within our actions. 
I like that. I think that's important. Um, and I, I want to dive a little bit deeper into that subject specifically. In Just in marketing in general, I think that a lot of people, and in leadership too, we could argue, a lot of people and brands are too busy talking at others or telling others what to do, how to do it, pontificating, etc. How do you go about eliciting change or inspiring people to change? Because this is, I mean, this is a very important topic in our world today. Yeah. Um, man, <laughs> That's, it's a loaded question. Start. It's a loaded question. I tell people at least the first thing is before we get deep into the uh, DEI conversation, it's how do I treat a human being like a human being? So let's just wipe away everything else and say, we are both humans on this world. Let's just listen and let's just connect with one another. That's first and foremost. And how do you do that? You start to take a step. You take a step, have a conversation with somebody and just shut up and listen. You don't have to have an opinion. You don't have to have a stance. You just shut up and you listen and you just take it in. Um, and you just hear the person out, whether your views are completely against whatever they're saying, or maybe you just don't understand it, but you need to listen first. And secondly, you don't need to be understood. You just need to take that information in and take some action. So first for leadership, I say, the first step is just by listening, go to different things that you haven't gone to before. Talk to somebody talk to maybe a friend or, or somebody that has another friend and just have that conversation and just open it up. Uh, and, and that's the first step of how you're going to really create change. Cause I can't just give you a bunch of tactics and methods and all that stuff. Cause you've got to yeah. start with here first. If you don't start there, especially in leadership, I mean, no change. And then the second thing is it change has to come from the top. It, it, it can't be this one pet project off on the side uh, for an organization to do this. It's got to start with the CEO and they got to be a hundred percent on board with it. Um, if, it, if they're not, it's, it's, it's going to be, unless there's a whole department guarantee, you know, dedicated to it with 30 or plus, plus more people, which only bigger organizations like JP Morgan, Nike, Adidas, you know, those kind of companies have most companies have like one person that's dedicated to DEI. If that At best, yeah, and they, <laughs> sure. and, they, and, they, and they barely give them any resources, time or money to be able to yeah. do what they need to do um, yeah. because they're just like, hey, go, go, go work on that. Go work on that. Go show that we're uh, we're diverse and inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. And then, well, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. So what I think is interesting about that, you, you, you talk about basically just treating everyone like a human, you know, having a conversation, but actually listening to, to gain that perspective. And I think sometimes so many people in this category, they're, they, they, they are trying to defend a stance or, or have a position as opposed to just learning and asking questions and, and having real relationships, right? Because at the core, that's what this is about, right? It's about, yeah, we all, we all have different perspectives and let, let's embrace those. Let's encourage those. Cause at, at the end of the day, to your point of, you know, lead the movement tying back to innovation, that's what yeah. drives the most innovation, right? And if we're all stuck in our one circle without, gaining outside perspective right yeah uh you yeah. know it you can you can stifle innovation really really quickly oh for sure good point for sure no it's uh it's it's one of those topics that are that i love to talk about because it's um i think through that topic of course with anything you're going to hear some of the loudest people on both sides of the of the of the argument or the conversation. A lot of people, you think about sports, some, you hear the same thing. You hear the loudest people on both sides of, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, yeah. of, of the coin. And you're just like, oh my God. But really most people that I talk, most people are in this middle part and they're just trying to learn and figure it out. And so the first step is always just learning and listening. Um, anytime I hear something new, I always like first, my first kind of re human reaction is like, whoa, that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, but then I say, okay, let me learn about it. Let me learn about it. And I'm not going to make a stance on it. I'm just, I'm just going to listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn some more of the facts, some more of, some more cases of it before I 
put my stake in the ground and say, this is where I stand on it. Because most people do that way too early. Like they just know everything. And it's like, dude, really? Really? I mean, how are you just going to know? I mean, you got to just at least hear somebody out. It's dangerous to make a stance way too early in anything, sure. business, personal. I mean, it's way, it's, it's, it's risky. It's risky. Yeah. I, I like I mean, how you make I, this so foundational and so, so simple rather than political. And it's a way of almost self-awareness. Think about it for a second. Just listen, hear them out. And you go back to basic human emotions. And to me, that, that is a very fresh perspective that opens my eyes and say, because we, we can all fall guilty of this and different things from sports to politics, current events, et cetera. It's like, yeah, you're right. I don't need to have an opinion. I need to listen first before I react or yeah. listen to listen, not listen to react. Right. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's completely foundational. The fundamentals of it, you know, like I don't go too deep into both sides of anything. I mean, it's literally the actual fundamentals of it and just learning you know, and, and just growing as an individual. And most times when you do that, you can at least find some common ground actually. And it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. And honestly, people would have more of conversations instead of yelling at each other. <laughs> <laughs> if they would just That's at least lot. listen <laughs> to both sides. <laughs> well, and it's interesting. You talk about listening to learn. I mean, just looking at listening to your story earlier about all the different changes you made in, in your life and in your career and in your goals. You know, that in every aspect, it seems that you've, you've approached it with that kind of lifetime learner aspect. I mean, right. To be, to, yes. to go from music to IT <laughs> to, to then, you know, a speaker entertainment, you know, event coordinator. I mean, you just start looking at that. I mean, each one of those things, I mean, I got to imagine that event at Pfizer. I mean, just listening to the complexity of that. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine day in and day out the learnings you had that go through just to pull it off the first time. Yeah. And then, you know, and I'm sure the second time now it'll be that much better, but, but I think so many people because they feel like, you know, maybe they've made it or that somehow their learnings are, have a limit to them. Yeah. You know, there's only so much I can know. There's only so much I can tackle. They cap themselves in their, in their careers and in their goals and in their impacts that they can have, you know, and sometimes it's, it's listening to learn from a perspective. Sometimes it's listening to learn maybe a skill that's going to allow you to, to advance. Yeah. It's so important. You always got to be willing to learn. Um, I just think it's, it's so dangerous for somebody to be like, I just know everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's super dangerous to do that. And it's the conference taught me so much about myself. I learned so much. Um, I now been joking with people that <clears throat> if anybody wants to rent out the uh, the arena, hire me as a consultant because I will save you a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I will save you a lot yeah. of money. Like guys, go so, with your car insurance. You know, because you don't have um, enough going on. Might as well start another business, right? Let's just do that. <laughs> I'm like, man, dude, I learned so much. There's so many hidden fees. Holy crap! <laughs> so many hidden fees. Um, a lot of the staff are very nice, and I mean. But it's, but man, when it comes down to it, there's, for a small business, it, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot to, to manage. So, um, but yeah, always grow, always continue learning. Um, and especially in this landscape and we talk about branding, marketing, advertising. I mean, you have to, you, you have to constantly keep learning because if you're stuck, dude, you're going to be like blockbuster and you get left behind, man. So one of the things we've seen with a lot of people is someone will look at yourself, Jamar, right? And say, you know, I, I want to be Jamar. I, I want that success. Right. But they, they miss the journey that you've gone through and, and the daily habits, right? Sometimes just the boring daily habits that we do that allow us to stack up wins. Right. And so, you know, as you look at tackling each day with all the different things you're going on, is there, is there something that you do to really tackle each day so that, you're moving that ball forward each and every day that you could share with the listeners. Yeah. And I can give you some tactical. Um, so every single day, no matter how busy the day is, I always jot down either. I usually do it in my, um, uh, in my system where I kind of just write down notes. Um, but you can do it on pen and pad, um, but jot down this. So one, you need to, 
put like a dollar sign, let's say, and you could do any kind of symbol, but, and I'm doing it from a business perspective. So that, that's kind of yep. how I see myself moving forward. So one thing is a dollar sign and say, did I do anything to increase revenue today? Did I do anything? Write those things down. If you did nothing, why? Why? What, what was it? Um, the second part is, uh, another one is that, did I do anything to make things more efficient? Um, so that's the other piece. What did I move forward today? What, what was it and then why? And then you put down, like I put down kind of a little people icon. And then that, that one's more of when you have a team and you say, hey, did I move the team forward today? You know, was there any kind of, and, and why not? And because those are really the three things in my business that I care most about. Mm -hmm. operations people cash because that's you know that's the life blood of the business For sure. um and of course the last one you know just is if kind of a free note is like did i what learning did i learn anything today and am i how am i going to apply it and if you continually do that you know every single day you start to like say oh man if all of a sudden you go a week by and you haven't touched that dollar sign in a while well, that's probably why <laughs> that's probably why you're in the space you're in because you need to yeah. put because as an owner, as a business owner, we have so much to do. And so but you got to stay true to those core elements of your business. Otherwise, you will get lost and you think that other things are more important when they're not. That's got to be in the book, right? Yeah, some some form of that is in the book, um, I believe. <laughs> It's all right. We got it out of the public today. That's that's incredible. <laughs> I love it. Jamar, I got to ask something. So you're a motivational guy um, in your marketing career, in the book, in the Lead the Movement event. I keep hearing these narratives of leadership, even in the DEI subject. It There's leadership everywhere. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean... I think um, I don't know if uh, if leadership is more of a natural thing for people to grow into, or if they can they can learn it. Um, I just think that through my life, I've just been kind of always drawn to leading people to something, um, and leadership is just such an important thing to learn and to master if you're going to grow into something bigger than yourself um you you have you have to you have to learn different ways and i'm constantly learning as a leader myself uh in this space and one of the things is that i'm learning also as a leader that you can't do it alone no matter what you Amen. think that you can do but you know i can do a lot of stuff <laughs> but i can't do it alone that conference was not done alone the my agency is not done alone. The, you know, even me putting out my book was not done alone. I mean, everything. And so you got to lead people. And so learning ways of how to get out your message clear and concise to make sure that people are believing in what you're doing and they're attached to it. So that way, as you're not in the room, it's still being moved forward um, in the way that it should be. And that's, that's just something that a lot of people need to – leadership is not just leading with that iron fist. It's, it's leading and supporting others um, and just being the person that sets the example. Um, and also knowing when you have weaknesses and just have those people around you that, are, that help balance that. You know, um, I'm not great at everything. There are certain things I've learned, especially in early childhood in school <laughs> – I struggle with, like a lot <laughs> and I know that I have people next to me that are excellent at that. And so with that kind of partnership, it's a lot of amazing things can happen, but leadership is, is the key to getting you, you know, where you want to go um, or at least supporting a leader. So that's the other thing. So if you're not kind of naturally, Hey, I'm going to lead, I'm just going to go in the forefront. Hey, there's people that are awesome to be able to accompany a leader and be there to support that. Um, you don't have to be this loud, boisterous per person in the front to lead. You can lead in different ways. Um, 
you know, the people think of always like, hey, the, you got to be in front of the audience, front of the crowd to be able to lead. You can be kind of a little bit in the shadows, but still lead people, have those little intimate conversations, talk with people, build them up. Um, and so it's just important to know kind of where you want to be in your in your in the role of it. Um, and then just constantly learn, constantly learn in that. You know, the other thing that I've heard from you, Jamar, is energy, right? So, I mean, you bring you bring in energy. Uh, you, you see it when you're uh, on stage. It's easy when you're speaking. You know, I'm sure you are with your team and things like that. And you know, a lot of a lot of that comes from when people think about success and business and leadership. And you know, there's a lot of challenges, right? I mean, we talked about overcoming adversity and, and different challenges you face. How do you kind of manage it all? But I mean, it certainly seems to me like each and every day you're, you're enjoying it, right? I mean, that's where you're, you're getting the energy and, and how do you, how do you battle that in your head? Right. Because there's always the demons in, in everyone's head, right. Which is the, you know, the negativity or, you know, the struggles you're facing. How do you kind of continue to, to get up every day and, and bring that energy like you do? Um, <clears throat> so I've learned that. So just a quick story. So I actually, in high school, I used to be a very angry individual. Find that hard I, had, to believe. I had I had anger <laughs> issues like you wouldn't believe. I've I've talked to counselors, uh, priests, pastors. Um, I've went to therapy. Um, I was very angry for a few, like at least maybe five years of my life. Um, got into fights. I mean, just I was pissed off at the world. Um. And so through that, I learned a lot about how to control your energy. And so when you talk about energy, I, when I'm having those down days, I either do one or two things. I just try to push through it, knowing that tomorrow's going to be a better day. So kind of thinking further than what the present is giving me. So like, man, today kind of sucked. You know, the client didn't pay on time. You know, I got to pay employees tomorrow. Um, also that one deal fell through and also I'm having issues, you know, um, inside the business where nobody knows where this one file is at. I don't know. I'm just throwing out an yeah. example. Yeah. Um, today kind of sucked. Like I didn't, didn't make any money. The operation sucked <laughs> <laughs> and the people are, you know, they're, they're all over the place. So I got to say, okay, do I just fret on that right now? Is that going to ruin my day or do I just look forward to the next day? So that's, that's, that's what pushes me through where I don't get down on myself so much. It's kind of like worry until you really need to worry about sure. something. Um, and then the second thing is like, if it get to a place where I really like, it's, it's, it's really weighing on me, you got to give yourself room and space to actually just have that happen. You got to mm -hmm. just give yourself the moment of just getting out whatever you need to get out. If, and, and just kind of, hey, do I go off and, and do something that just helps me clear my head? Do I have a, a cry? Do I have, you know, um, where I talk to somebody about it? You have to get out that emotion and then keep moving forward. Don't bottle it up. So that's kind of how I say so positive or so, you know, where the energy is always good, you know, on this is that I kind of evaluate those situations every single time. And I just do what's appropriate. And I kind of learned that from all the therapy and all the other things, what I dealt with how to manage uh, your anger and how to manage, yeah. you know, that, um, that stress. That's incredible. One of the the messages uh, we talk about a lot and, and I, I actually heard from a friend was windshield. Yeah. Right? If you're, if, if you're looking in the rear view uh, or just in the present, right. But if you, you're always windshield, there's always something to look forward to. Always, always. There really is. There always is something to look forward to. And yeah. You know, today is not determining your tomorrow. I mean, you can totally change. You can it could totally be different. And a lot and most times in business it is. Like it, you might have a day that you struck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, the next day it's like, oh, I had three clients pay on the same time. You know, it's like I've been waiting for this for like a week. Um for sure. but that's just kind of what happens. That's just that's just the name of the game. You know, it's it goes, it's ebb and flows, it goes up and down. It's interesting you say that, and I've, I've always said you have to be graceful with yourself. And on those days, I think you have to look around. Sometimes you have to, you do have to sit back. But I, I think if you take that moment and you look around, you'll see that God has opened a door, sometimes multiple doors. 
And I heard on a podcast recently, someone expounded upon this idea and he said, you know what? Most people don't even get up to walk to the door. Um, so at least get up, walk to the door, see what's through that door, because there's bound to be an opportunity, large, medium, small on the other side. Yeah. And so uh, we talked about this even on a previous episode. There's opportunities aplenty, but you got to get up and walk through that damn door. You have to. <laughs> you got to take a step. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's 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 crucial, man. You got to you got to do something, do some action. Uh, one foot in front of the other is what the, a lot of people say. Yeah. Okay, Jamar. Final question. Uh, we've got a lot of leaders, coaches, entrepreneurs who listen to the show. What would be uh, one piece of advice that might be your favorite or one piece of advice that you feel like you just love to share? One piece of advice. Could be anything. I mean, that was, that, it was kind of a broad stroke one because uh, entre- I feel like entrepreneur is a little different than maybe leaders of companies. And I mean, it's, it's kind of a different spaces and times uh, that people are in. But I, I would say that and i just was talking about this but have have the mentality of failing fast um you don't have to have this perfect scenario for a long period of time you know a lot of like i just think the days of like i'm gonna build this you know year-long strategy that's going to, you know, like we're in this trajectory and we're going to have all these goals and all this other stuff. Like, it's awesome to have goals, but man, like try some stuff, you know, do things in iteration, fail fast and learn from it. And then, and then correct that. Um, and, and this kind of comes down from my IT background where, you know, with software, you have to fail fast and you got to be able to pivot and change and correct and, and grow with that. Learn from the market. How do you apply it? And that's what's going to help you get to where you're trying to go. So many people get paralyzed with just that fear of like, oh, man, it's, it's got to work. It's got to be perfect. Um, and I think about like my conference, like, dude, in the behind the scenes, it was not perfect. But to, from the <laughs> from everybody else that went there, they're like, dude, it blew me away. It looked like it was flawless. A lot of people don't even yeah. realize that we started like 30 minutes late. <laughs> and people don't even realize it. They're like, dude, I didn't even realize it. And somehow we got yeah. back on track and um, by by lunch. And I, st- I honestly, I don't still know, know how my team did that. But, um, but there, was, there was a lot of mayhem that was happening. But we just we just did it. We took a chance. We tried something. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of companies and entrepreneurs get stuck in like, hey, the tried and true. This is what got us here. So we're just going to stay in this. And we're not going to try anything new. We're not, we're afraid to pivot and change in those different areas. You got to be willing to try um, and then learn from it and then keep going. Um, And you can make so much more progress than just these long drawn out things. Next thing you know, you tally the box of what, what did you achieve? And there's like two things and it's like small. It's like, (laughs) it's, I, I, that, 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 that would be my, my one advice of, of doing this because I think changing my circle again and again, I've learned how to fail fast and, and make those changes um, and to have really, you know, exponential growth. And that circle continues to change. It sounds like always it will until I'm, till I'm no longer able to, <laughs> to change it, man. Um, you know, it's, it's because it's the key. I mean, somebody, I, I, it's, I've kind of stealing this from Grant Cardone, but the, but somebody's got what you want. Right. Yeah. And if you get to that, if you go to a new circle, you will open up another opportunity and somebody's got it. Somebody's mm-hmm. got that opportunity sitting right there for you. It's, you're not going to get it just sitting in your same circle. So I'm always going to be changing my circle and, and seeing seeing what's out there. Great perspective. Jamar, well, let's put a bow on this thing. Tell everybody, our lovely listeners, where they can find you, where they can find that book. And if you want to pepper in a little bit about the Lead the Movement coming up. Let's hear it. Yeah. So you, everybody can connect with me on um, LinkedIn, um, all, all our social platforms. Uh, go to IamJamarJones.com. Um, IamJamarJones.com. And we have all my socials on there. You can check out our podcast. You can check out 
all the stuff we got going on. Also, our agency is Forever Movement. That's uh, F-O-U-R-E-V-A uh, Media. So forevermedia.com. Um, that's our agency. And then um, the book, Change Your Circle, Change Your Life, is on Amazon. So you can check that out as well. So go ahead and grab you that. And, yeah, our um, to get up to date with our, with our Lead the Movement business conference, it's going to be the day we are shooting for is September 29th. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. Uh, definitely check it out. That's ltmconference.com that you can see all the updates there. Uh, we ha- we're going to be working on the announcement. You're kind of hearing it, uh, before it's officially announced <laughs> on here. So I don't know when this releases, but, um, definitely check that out and, uh, get queued on for the updates. And then we have the forever movement, which is our membership platform more for, uh, people that, are entrepreneurs or people that um, want to grow in their career and change their circle. And so we have an educational platform that we build up uh, courses and content uh, and trainings to help people. Uh, And also we have micro events. So you're invited to those micro events by becoming a member um, on there as well. So I know I just threw out a lot, but I got a lot going on. (laughs) There you go. Dustin, final thoughts. Yeah, Jamar, thank you for joining us. Uh, there was a ton of really good nuggets here. I think, uh, you know, your success in many ways speaks for itself. But I think what's what's even more exciting is you can tell there's so much more in front of you. And, uh, yeah. you know, excited to have this conversation. And, and yeah, we'd love to have future conversations as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. No, I appreciate yeah. it. For me, it's just interesting. I, I think the more we have these conversations with great leaders like yourself, leadership is everywhere. And uh, one of the, the key takeaways for me and – it's really, you just have this continued vision for the future, this continued optimism. And I think that's a, that's a big catalyst for your success and your future success. So I just want to say thank you for being on the show. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you never cease to amaze me. I know our, our audience can find you everywhere. And uh, I hope we can have you back on the show at some time in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hustle Nation podcast. We'll see you next time. Peace.